Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is GGF bringing you episode two of Let's Play Brigandine, The Legend of Runerzia. Runerzia? Runerzia? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, it's a legend, and we're here. So I hope you guys are doing well. We are going to ditch the mouse, I think. And, uh, go ahead and check out the rest of this training mode, which is just two things left, quest, quest rewards and tips for class changes. So let's, um, let's go. There's a lot to this game. This tutorial just covers, like, the basics. But it's good, it's good. All right. Welcome to the world of Brigandine, the legend of Runertia. This tutorial will explain the controls. In the tutorial, you'll learn about quests, as they are a great way to level up your knights and monsters. First, select quests from the base menu. Base menu, which would be what? Okay. Quests. There are two categories for quests. Exploration quests for obtaining items or monsters, and training quests for earning XP. Exploration quests acquire items, equipment, or monsters on these quests. Success and drop rates will vary depending on the dispatch knight's level and class. Training quests acquire XP for the knights and monsters in the dispatch troop. Quests are divided into exploration and training categories. Choose one of the troops stationed at your base and select dispatch to begin. Select a destination from the list on the right to view available exploration quest locations. Depending on your current base, different quests with different rewards may be available. Destinations with a higher outlook have a better chance of yielding rare re rewards. The flashing Rune Knight icon indicates that there's a Rune Knight located here. You may be able to recruit them if you encounter them on a quest. Now, try dispatching a troop on an exploration quest. Note, you can't dispatch the Ruler Rubino on an exploration quest. Select a troop with the K key, choose the location. Okay. A quest's outlook will change depending on your knight's level and class. And the higher the outlook, the better rewards your knight can find during a quest. Alright, dispatch Ariana to Tillam Valley. We click there, we look there, it's a good outlook. There's a rune knight there. Okay, you've now dispatched one of your knights to the Tillam Valley. Brendan has good compatibility with the plains of Delza. Try dispatching him there. Okay, that works. The last troop on this list is at a low level, so it's best to send troops like this on training quests to help them get stronger. Training quests lets knight and monsters gain experience in a safe environment. Quests like this are ideal for monsters you've only recently summoned, as these monsters may not be battle ready yet. Let's give it a try, select Pix troop and send them to the training grounds. All your troops are now dispatched until the end of the current season. There are a few other things you should be aware of when it comes to dispatching troops on quests. Troops away on quests will be absent from their base during the attack phase. This means they'll be unable to fend off enemy attacks or invade enemy bases. Press the J key twice to return to the main map and advance the season to view the results of the quest. Alright, press the B key to end the organization phase and the attack start the attack phase oh and the attack phase this will take one season so we go through the attack phase too now the season is up all right boom holy thunder bow interesting so we found a holy thunder bow two star Brendan found an Ice Helm. The results screen shows the rewards acquired this season. These may include items or equipment, all of which have their own rarity rating from 1 star to 3 star. Okay, pretty cool. Monsters may also be recruited to join your forces at the end of a quest. Alright. wonder if monsters can wear like an Ice Helm. And picks troops. Training quests will display experience gained instead of items. And Rune Knights are monsters that gain the necessary XP will immediately level up. She gained 300 XP. Awesome. 
Education leveled up to level two. Got some cool stats. Imran, level eight. So that's cool. The monsters level up and get stats as well. Friend has different stats and different level up stats. Kind of randomized, which is pretty cool. The Shores levels up. A new knight has been recruited. When you encounter a rune knight during a quest, they will be recruited as a new knight. Knights are essential for expanding and defending your territory. Take advantage of quests with a rune knight icon and be proactive in dispatching troops for these quests. My name is Shu Fen. I will gladly risk my life to save everyone else's. Cool. So we got Shu Fen. Good work completing all the objectives in the tutorial. This tutorial focused on quests. The next will cover how to change the class of your knights and monsters. Very cool. Do we want to start the last one? Yes. All right. Welcome to the world of Brigantine, the legend of Runersia. Tutorial will explain the controls and will cover how to change a unit's class. First, select class from the menu. Each unit has a class, their job, or species. Gain XP through battles or quests to raise a unit's level. If the unit is a knight, the proficiency tier will also increase. Units can change classes after fulfilling conditions such as reaching a certain level or proficiency tier, raising certain stats, or obtaining a specific item. There are six proficiency tiers. A unit's proficiency tier increases by one for each level a unit gains. Reaching tier five master will allow units to carry over certain spells and abilities when changing their class. Well, that's cool. Um, spells and abilities that can be carried over have a master icon that will change color once the unit reaches the max proficiency tier. So that would be like the heal spell. I don't know. We'd have to look at that. It's got an M icon on a metal. Uh, select the unit on the class screen to see their current class and the hierarchy of future classes. Classes cannot be reverted to a lower class in the same class type, but changing to a new type will allow units to start from the lowest class in that type. Wow, look at those classes. Berserker, Viking, Barbarian. Ah, I didn't read all that. No units returning to a class type will continue from whatever their tier was before changing classes. Note, some class types split into two paths. In this case, you can only choose one path. Uh, you cannot change to a class that is lower than your current class. You cannot change to your current class. The up icon indicates that you can change your class. Select Paladin as your new class and press confirm. A lock icon is displayed if you are unable to change class. With the conditions you still need to meet grayed out. In this case, your proficiency is insufficient. Next, we'll try changing a Rune Knight's class. Select Skizzler to begin. Wow. When a Knight upgrades to a new class, they can carry over their current proficiencies. Changing to a different class type may require that certain conditions be met first. Some classes have different progression paths for male and female units. Let's take a look at how to change to a different class type. Select Mage type from the list above. This is wild, guys. Look at this. They have icons like in sports games for the level up chart. He gets a lot of HP as a knight. Not much agility. Very cool. All these stats and everything. I love it. But let's select mage type. Wow. You can compare different classes stats before making a change. In this case, the current class knight is on the left and the new class mage is on the right. Stats that are higher than your current class will be displayed in green, while lower stats will be displayed in red. Right, very simple, makes sense, good interface. Press the I key twice to switch to the magic tab. Oh right, there's tabs up there. There's a uh, skill. Magic. The screen shows the different magic techniques each class can learn. Note the heal skill in blue has the master icon next to it. Perfect. Skills like this, which have reached their maximum proficiency, can be carried over to a new class type. 
Skills that haven't been mastered yet would be grayed out to show they cannot be carried over. Proficiency is a stat exclusive to knights and increases by one every time they level up. A skill is mastered once it reaches a proficiency tier of five. Mastered abilities and magic can be carried over to a new class. When changing classes, use this to your advantage to make your knights more powerful than ever. Now try changing this unit's class to mage. Are you sure you want to change classes? Proficiency five to zero. Boom, son. We've got a mage. Interesting. Unit's class is now changed. Switching to a class type is a great way to acquire new skills to make your troops more versatile. So as a mage, he can master flame, power, and excel. Um, and then they would roll over to the next class. And then he's got heal, I guess, permanently. Be aware that once you've upgraded to a new class, you cannot return to lower ranking versions of that same class. Monsters can also change their class. Press the J key twice to return to the troop screen. <clears throat> Monsters capable of changing class will have up displayed on their icon. Most monsters will gain access to a new class after reaching a certain level. Others may require specific items to unlock their new classes. Let's take a look at how to change a monster unit's class. Select the imp to begin. Imp Imran. Wow, gremlin. The process is largely the same for monsters as it is for knights. Select the gremlin class to change into. Oh, it's just an expanded version. Monsters can only upgrade to new versions of their current class, like with knights. You can compare stats first with the current class displayed on the left and the new class on the right. Changing to a higher class means better stats and combat power. However, more XP will be required to reach each new level. Plus, their magic cost goes up. Changing classes can also increase, increase a monster's magic cost and upkeep mana. So keep an eye on your rune power and mana reserve. Now press the I key to view this monster's magic. Changing from Imp to Gremlin will give this unit access to new spells. Different monsters learn different spells and abilities, so experiment and bring out your monster's best qualities. React is one of the gremlin's best skills. It can give a unit two actions in the same turn. Now try changing this monster's class. All right, let's do it. it turns into a pink, bigger version. That's cool. A gremlin. Awesome. Good work completing all the objectives in the tutorial. Changing a unit's class is a great and exciting way to see the results of your troops training and hard work throughout many battles. This concludes the final tutorial. All of the tutorials can be replayed at any time. Feel free to go through them again if you need a refresher on this information. Awesome. So that is it for the tutorials. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, good. Um, so... If we come out here... We have these I was just playing around with. I don't know if I can delete them. Alright, let's just go to new game. And here we have two grayed out modes. Alternate chapter challenge mode unlocked after clearing the Legend of Renersia and origin chapter creative mode unlocked after clearing the Legend of Renersia. So we're going to play the Legend of Renersia, the main mode. Choose one of the six powers and reclaim the pages of the Legend of Renersia as you aim to unify the land. <clears throat> Let's go. This is our home, the land of Runerzia. Take a good look, visitor of this world. Since long ago, this land has been blessed with a never-ending shower of mana. This mana is a mysterious power given to man by the Rune God. 
As mankind collected more and more mana, so too did their ability to control this power grow. They gained profound knowledge, wielded swords with strength far superior to men, and used diverse magic that could be called upon at will. Eventually, they gained the ability to summon ancient monsters that would obey their every command. Over time, these warriors came to be known as Rune Knights. Before long, it was as, as if Rune Knights had been driven mad by the power of mana in their quests for greatness. They expanded their armies with swords, knowledge, and magic, and even fought rival rune knights when necessary. Many nations rose to power, and many nations crumbled to dust. And so history seemed doomed to repeat itself. But for the Rune Knights, all that mattered were the five brigandines. Each armor piece or accessory had embedded within it one of the five mana stones gifted to man by the Rune God. A Rune Knight who wore a brigandine was gifted with power that far exceeded the power of any other knights. The wars raged on throughout the land were faithfully recorded in the legend of Runerzia, and the knowledge we gained through war led us to record the great truths that we found. However, while waiting for the one true rune knight that we unite the land, the book was lost to the flames of war. Take a good look, visitor of this world. There are five brigandines scattered across Runerzia, justice, sanctity, freedom, glory, and ego. You can choose to bear the crest of the brigandine or not. As you start down one of the six paths to total conquest, and as you gain control of each territory, perhaps even the lost pages of the legend of Runerzia will return. Unify the land and learn the truth of what transpired here in Runerzia. Cool. And now we're at character select. Runerzia, year 781. Five nations and one tribe plunge the land of Venerzia into a new era of chaos. Six rulers and their rune knights throw themselves into the flames of war, each with their own hopes and expectations. And we've got, looks like, six choices. The Norzaleo Kingdom. We'll look at each one and see who we ultimately pick. They're up here in the northwest. Their ruler is Rubino. He is the keeper of the Brigandine of Justice and heir to the throne of Norzaleo. Rubino's empathy for others and kind heart make him loved by the people. He also possesses the strength of character to always do what is right. With the flames of war threatening to destroy his nation, Rubino IV steps onto the battlefield to fight in the name of justice. Five bases, 13 total knights, 543 mana reserve, and 33 total monsters. Okay, let's... um. Check the next one. Come down here to the Republic of Guimu. Guimu. Ruler Eliza Uzala. 
She is the daughter of al Zala, the bedridden 15th president of the Republic of Guimul. The sword of, uh, the sword of An Anj awakens upon realizing the danger the country faces and tasks her with a life-changing mission. Previously a ballerina performing with a secret identity, she must now accept her fate to don the brigandine of glory and perform on the stage of battle. Eight bases, which is pretty high, but only 12 total knights. 905 mana reserve, which is nice, and 35 total monsters. And very cool looking chick. Then we've got the Shinobi tribe. The ruler is Talia. The Shinobi tribe is ruled by women who reside in a fortified village deep in the mountains and valleys of the former Hazam nation. Their heirloom, the Brigandine of Freedom, represents the freedom these women have longed for. Talia, daughter of Chief Mother Della, fights for the future of the tribe, a future that won't be threatened by the wars of other nations. They've got five bases, 12 total knights, 482 mana, and only 30 total monsters. But a very cool faction nonetheless, and they're right in the midst of things. And we've got the Holy Gustava Empire. Check him out with his furs. Mm. Ruler is Tim Gustav. He is the 13th emperor of the Holy Gustava Empire. Their land is barren and ridiculed by their neighbors, and they have no brigandine. Nevertheless, the empire survived through strong family ties and the spirit of rebellion, which Tim calls the beautiful blood of the family. Tim aims to conquer Runerzia to vindicate the name and blood of his family. He's got six bases, the lowest amount of knights so far, and ten. Highest mana reserve, 1007, and a high amount of monsters, 35. Very cool. Then we've got the Mana Silesia Theocracy. Look at this one. Check out that dude. Wicked look cool looking. <laughs> Okay, the ruler is Rudo Marco. He's the legitimate son of Romanov, the holy sovereign of the Mana Silesia Theocracy. Long ago, the Mana Stone Thirty Years' War between the Republic of Guimul's Mohana sect and the Theocracy's Zai sect created a deep rift in the Rune faith. Rudo now dons the Brigantine of Sanctity in order to bring all of Runercia under the rule of the Zai sect. He's got 10 bases, 14 total knights, 1202 mana reserve, and 49 total monsters. He is the strongest thus far in pretty much every category. Then we've got the United Islands of Merelva. Wow, look at all these islands. That is very cool. She's got a cool pirate hat on and scimitar type thing. The ruler is Stella Hamet. She's the descendant of the legendary pirate Captain Hamet. The war has stirred up the wild pirate blood of the people of Morelva, and Stella decides to set off to conquer the Brunersia with the Brigandine of Ego. Decisive and spontaneous, she decides it would be best to strike anyone else strike before anyone else has a chance. Her actions are straightforward and direct. Seven bases, 14 knights, good numbers there. Mana reserve, 727, total monsters, 39. So I think that's everybody. Yep. So we've got the, the kind, empathetic ruler, fourth of his line. We've got the former secret ballerina, Performing with the Brigandine of Glory, which I think is pretty cool. At the Shinobi tribe, which is ruled by women, it's just a small landmass there, and probably the weakest if we look. To only 30 total monsters, yeah, pretty, pretty low stats there. Holy Gustava Empire, which does not have a Brigandine, but has some fiery blood to take over Runercia and a lot of land. Mana Silesia Theocracy, this is very cool too, and they're super powerful, definitely a, a heavy-handed start. They've got the most bases, the most monsters by far, 
most mana reserve and total knights 14 ties for the highest then we've got the piratey islands of morelva which is very cool too would be fun navigating those islands captain hamnet but she uses the brigandine of ego which eh, i'd probably rather the brigandine of justice if i'm honest but let's keep looking and see what inspires here. Uh, definitely like the Republic of Guimul. Really like the Shinobi tribe ruled by women. I think we'll cut out the Holy Gustava Empire. That's a power start. I really like the United Islands of Morelva too. They're right on the border of the Mana Silesia Theocracy, although they do also kind of border the Holy Gustava Empire a bit. Yeah, they do border it, but they border the strongest faction in the game, whereas Norzaleo up here can kind of chill on their island for a bit. That's a nice starting space for the Republic of Guibul. Shinobi tribe is really up against it on all sides. Definitely a harder start. Um, and again, they're ruled by women. And they have the brigandine of freedom. But they're fighting in a tribe, which is... Very tough to, to start as them. Kind of a tough start for the Holy Gustav Empire. So I think I'm going to go with... Uh, do we want Shinobi Tribe? Look at Guimul. Norzaleo can start by going after the Holy Gustav Empire. And the Shinobi Tribe. Shinobi Tribe is going to be the hardest. By far, I'd say. Over her stats again. Pretty healthy. And they've got the Sword of Ange. I don't know if that's an actual sword. A talking sword, maybe? Um, we might just go with the basic start of Norse Leo. Fight in the name of justice. Um, lowest amount of monsters almost. No, someone has 30. Shinobi tribe. I don't know who to be. Leo, I think it's between Norse Leo and Shinobi Tribe. Um, let's be the Norse Leo Kingdom. Kind of a basic start, but we'll go with Rubino. Check our stats once more. He's a kind, empathetic ruler. I dig it. Uh, difficulty, suitable for beginners. Enemy AI is normal. The limit is none. Normal has a 5 year, 120 seasons limit. The enemy AI is intelligent. I would like that. All we can customize too. And his class is a prince, Rubino. I'd like to turn off the limit, so let's see. Normal, no limit. Um, revival stone access from quests banner acquisition no change quest success rate no change monster capture allow 
CPU defensive AI, don't guard Castle Hex. Guard Castle Hex, random battlefield. I guess we'll leave that. So we'll go with normal intelligent AI, but no time limit. So we can play a real long game. Uh, do we want to start as Rubino? Are you sure? Ah, uh, still just kind of thinking about that Shinobi tribe. Let's go with Norse Leo. Let's roll. Skip this guide. Review guide at menu options guide. No, we don't want to skip it. Oh. Neatly dressed dame. That was wonderful, Prince Rubino. I simply could not believe this is the first play you've ever written. Thank you for your kind words. Perhaps now my father will finally recognize my skills with the arts. My, my, with all these women surrounding you like this, you already look the part of a great playwright, Prince. Elena, what are you doing? You shouldn't leave the dressing room with your costume on. Well, that's just it. The lines are rather childlike. So isn't this costume a bit too old for the role? Now, now, Miss Elena, just because you've known the prince for so long doesn't give you the right to speak to him in any way you please. Of course I can. Playwrights need a bit of criticism to properly grow. Isn't that right, prince? I believe that's what my father always tells you, isn't it? Lord Skizzler said that? Indeed. And a new writer certainly shouldn't object to anything that the Royal Troop star actor tells them, right? Well, at any rate, Lord Skizzler, tonight was amazing. Ah, ladies. Oh no, what's wrong, father? You look ill. Oh, it's nothing. Ladies, I am terribly sorry, but might I have a word with Prince Rubino? But of course, we'll be on our way. Please excuse us. Lord Skizzler, what can I do for you? Your Grace, I do believe that there were some rather unpleasant patrons lurking in the stands today. What do you mean by unpleasant patrons? It's rather difficult to see the audience while on stage, but we have to ability the sense to sense the mood of our patrons. You might call it an actor's intuition of sorts. Lord Skizzler, your fame precedes you. Not only that, but you are also one of our most prominent rude knights. And if you say you sense something sinister going on, then there's probably a good reason for it. Your Grace, Prince Rubino! General Grados, what are you doing here? Has something happened? It's your father, the king. The king is dead. That, that can't be. Oh, Norzaleo. We shall have justice. Hear me, great winds. And Lamuna, Katrishna, may you carry our king to find safety with the rune god. He had no visible injuries? Indeed. And according to the guards, there were no signs of anyone suspicious near his chambers. I don't believe it. The king was in such good health. Elena, mind your tongue. You are being rude to the general. It's quite all right, Lord Skizzler. I just don't know how I will ever atone for allowing something like this to happen. General. Prince Rubino. A knight blames themselves before blaming others. You are the one who taught me that, General. I don't know what to say. 
At any rate, blaming you or any of the guards is not going to bring my father back. Lord Skizzler sensed it himself. There is no doubt that something sinister is approaching our country of justice. It is as our prince has said. Gio? What's wrong? You look pale. The, the Brigandine. Brigandine, I guess. Your Grace, I believe our brigandine senses the approach of something that threatens our justice. Are you sure? Prince Rubino, General Grados, we have an emergency. We have just received word that our eastern base, Warren, has been captured by the Holy Gustava Empire. It can't be. Wow, so immediately going after Holy Gustava. Those dirty Gustavans, they have made more than a few threatening moves as of late. They're probably behind the king's death as well. Lord Skizzler, in that case it would be also be safer to assume their involvement. These embers are going to spread to other nations as well. They may very well envelop the entire continent of Runersia. Your Grace. Even if the continent is to be engulfed in the flames of war, we cannot allow Norzaleo's flame of justice to ever be extinguished. Alright, so we are dropped. Oh. The fate of the Norzaleo Kingdom is tied to that of the Holy Gustava Empire. Without warning, those barbarians have invaded our nation and now occupy our land. And this is but a small portion of the fire that is now raging on Runerzia. Our justice is being threatened. We must take a stand before the fire spread and consume us all. We shall carry our justice to every corner of this world and show the people the true path. It shall be done. Move out. Okay, that's a bit of an intro. All right, and then we get the gameplay and basic rules. The main mode is where you select a nation, power, to play as while you unify Renersia by occupying all the bases on the map. Other nations are also trying to conquer Renersia as well. Be sure to monitor the map carefully as you guide your nation. If all your nation's bases are lost, then it's game over. Note, this explanation can be reviewed at any time from options guides. Gameplay is divided into an organization phase where preparations are made and an attack phase where invasions occur. One season consists of one organization phase and one attack phase. The organization phase is where you prepare for battle by summoning monsters, organizing your troops, and positioning them at bases for invasions or defense. A horse icon at the top left of the map screen indicates you're in the organization phase. During the attack phase, troops, units will battle to control bases. Other enemy nations will also fight each other during this phase. Defeat an enemy nation in direct combat to occupy their base. If there's no knights in the target base, you occupy the base immediately. A sword icon at the top left of the map screen indicates you're in the attack phase. The main map shows the distribution of power by displaying the flag of the occupying nation above each base. Move the mouse wheel up or down to toggle between three camera zoom settings. Frontline bases are enemy bases connected to your own by a single road. These are crucial sites as you may invade or have to defend next turn. Frontline bases are indicated with an icon of two clashing swords. Place the cursor on a base to see its summary in the bottom left. Press the K key to open the base menu. You may summon monsters at your bases. They may then be assigned to a troop if there is a knight stationed there. You can see which units are stationed at enemy bases via base info. Note the base summary preview only shows mana income and the three troops with the highest total combat power. Alright. Year 781, first season. And we are in the game, so... 
Here we are in the world map. Get a better look of everything. So it looks like, wow, Koa Lupa of the Shinobi tribe borders the Gustavan Empire, borders... Who's Alternia? All the, the men of Cilicia. They also border... No, that's it. Those two. Um, wow, they're only connected to the Republic of Guimu by this road right here to Fupai. So they can kind of... It's not too bad, actually. They're not that open like I thought they were. There's mountains in the way. So that's a tricky one for Koalupa. They can kind of chill with these other bases back here, which are safe in the mountains. That's pretty cool. And then Fupai has to be defended against right here. We have Harmonia, which needs to be defended from Cornworn. These are cool back here on the island. And then Lorenz and the Holy Gustav Empire, which is like a very spread out empire. All right, so I'm going to save here, guys. As episode two. Um, we played for 41 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned, guys, because more is definitely going to come. We're going to get into the actual combat and strategy portions of the game. Uh, I may even double ch double think and start as the uh, second guest and start as the Shinobi tribe. I don't know, but I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, please consider leaving a like, hitting the thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here and hit the notification bell, but only do those things if you really want to. Uh, no pressure or anything like that. So do what you like. It is all good. Hope you'll join me next time, though. Much more fun to be had here, as you can see. Um, until next time, guys, be well, live well, stay well. And as always, much love, peace, and joy to all of you. And we will tackle this next time. Gonna be a lot of fun, and I hope to see you guys then. Bye-bye.